This one thing is the key not only to a better game design document, but a better resulting game. Hi, my name is Brennan Davis, and I've been a software developer for the past 12 years. I have done my share of design documents. To be honest, I used to cringe every time I thought about having to do a design document. I just wanted to jump in and start coding something. While I find that much more fun than taking the time to define success criteria, without a direction, what are you even going to code? Your project has little to no chance of success if you rush in keyboard blazing. So how can we make design document creation a more appealing option than just jumping in and starting to code? I've got a few ideas to share, but first, let's dive into what a game design document even is and why it's beneficial to have one. Indie games like Stardew Valley and Hollow Knight have been some of my favorite games to play as of late. Because I'm in the middle of my own game development project, taking a task manager and combining it with a cozy life sim type of game, I was very interested in the development process of these two games, so I took a closer look. I wanted to see what it was that made these games so great. And the thing that I found that they have in common is that the developers had a clear, well-defined vision for what it was that they wanted these games to be. More on that in just a bit. A clear vision is the key to a successful game, and the place that you can write that vision down and explore it is in a game design document. This game design document is an architectural blueprint of your game. It's where you write down the what, the how, and the why behind your game. We learned from our good pal Simon Sinek that the way that people think about the what, the how, and the why is often backwards. In this case, we're talking about building a video game. If that's what you lead with, then nobody's gonna care. There's tons of people that make video games. Why should people spend time with your game versus another? As Simon says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So if you're making your game just to make money, the likelihood of your game being successful is little to none because there's nothing for your audience to resonate with. Is there an important message that you're trying to convey? Going back to Stardew Valley, there are themes in Stardew Valley of consumerism, recommuning with nature, overcoming flaws. There are people who are dealing with alcoholism in the game. There were messages that the creator was trying to get across. Hollow Knight is the same way. There's themes of regret and overcoming the past, leaving the past behind you. If you can figure out the why behind what you're making, your game design document is going to be a breeze to make because everything is going to radiate out from that purpose. If your vision and message is clear, people are gonna resonate with your game and they're gonna be much more likely to play it and share it with others. My suggestion would be to grab a piece of paper and a pen or perhaps a tablet and a drawing app or a mind mapping software, something that allows you to be able to create a central idea and then radiate out from it. Your game design document should literally start with your why in the very center. So write that out. What is the why? What is the purpose behind what you're making? What message do you want to share? The why behind the game that I'm making, my gamified task manager, is that I have a strong belief that productivity should be fun. You're much more likely to get things done if you're having fun while doing them. So the app that I am making is all centered around the idea of taking mundane, boring tasks and offering rewards for getting those things done. The ultimate purpose is to encourage people to get their things done in the real world so that they can have more time to do the things that they really want to. From here, you let the why help you to figure out the how. How are you going to convey this purpose? This is where you think about things like the world that your game takes place in, the story behind it. What are the game mechanics? How are you going to tell the story? Are you going to tell it through cutscenes? Are you going to tell it through your character finding lost journals of a character that had come before? What is the art style and the UI going to look like? Is this a 3D game, a 2D game, pixel art, illustration? What is the tech stack that you're going to use? What are the platforms that this will be released on? The benefit of using something like pen and paper is that you're not tied to a specific structure. You can include sketches, you can take things as far as they need to go. As long as you continue to have ideas, you can keep branching off. You're much more likely to 
come up with better ideas and being able to get into that flow state of brainstorming if you're not locked into a specific structure. Your game design document is a living document. It can change and adapt over time. My game design document is still at a very general level. And as I continue to do more research on games that I like and task managers that I like, I can add those things in and this game design document continues to grow. What shouldn't change about your game design document is that why, the central purpose behind what you're making. That, above anything else, is what helps you to prevent scope creep. As you find yourself getting off into the weeds, come back to that central purpose. That will help to guide you and will keep you anchored. Now let's say you're using your game design document to pitch your idea to a publisher. They may want to see a more formal, linear game design document. In that case, just take your mind map type of game design document and write it out in a linear fashion. Maybe include some of the sketches that you did so they can help the publisher to better visualize what it is that you're trying to build. If this doc is just for you or your team, go ahead and just keep it in this rough, mind-mapped style. The important thing is, is that you have a place where your ideas are written down and you know where you're headed. Now that you have a game design document, you can use it to help organize your project and create specific tasks for you to complete. You can see how I organize my solo dev projects in this video here.